Alright everyone, we are back to the fourth game of Intel Extreme Masters Asia. This is Kelly and we are on Delta Quadrant with Toda Biscuit. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, you can see right here Lono in the red trunk spawning at the northeast end of the map. He is playing Terran versus his opponent, Moonglade, in the purple trunks, playing Zerg, spawning to the northwest of this particular map. So, Kelly, as our analyst, what would you say about these opening spawn positions? Well, once again, it's close position. This probably would not be um, how you want to be caught with a Terran player. As you can see, the natural is right here, and the Terran is spawning just right here, which means he can do, you know, Helion run buys really easily. But the thing is, Lonia goes for mostly, you know, Marines, Marine opening. So we see Moonglade decides to fast expand, which I think maybe this round here want to go for a 14, 14, um, 14 extractor and 14 pool. Yeah, it's a little safer in terms of the actual build, considering how close it is. And it really is very close indeed. It could be absolutely devastating if his expansion is attacked. But it looks like he's going for it anyway. You can tell by the minimal count and the double drone coming out right here for Moonglade. One scout and the other, of course, will be turned into an expansion. That's been seen by Lona. So Lona's response, I imagine, will be the same as it always is, which is maybe that double barracks opening. Well, you have to remember that these two players are really good um, because Glade actually won, won the SEA qualifier and Lona won the China and Taiwan qualifier. And Lona, I think he did a really convincing 2-0 win against Sen, which is from Fnatic, you know. Yeah. The fact that you can do a 2-0 against Sen is a big freaking deal, folks. There's no question about that. So it is something that you do need to keep an eye on. But we are seeing a double barracks opening right here from Lona. It has been scouted very early by Moonglade. Moonglade's response, of course, he's going to have to rely pretty much on his drones and hopefully spying crawler. Spawning pool is on the way, but Marines are already on the field right here for Lona. And they will be, by the looks of it, going straight over there. Yeah, I'm not sure if you would try to do a bunker contain this time, but Lona is like, okay... You know what, last round I probably was either overconfident or too careless um, and not being careful enough. This round I'm just going to go for the opening that I'm most comfortable to with, which is, you know, two wrecks opening. Can... Whoa, okay. This is interesting. Pulling an awful lot of drones off the line right there for a bit of patrol. Looking out for that bunker. Going to get a little bit of mining in while he can. He doesn't want to cripple his economy so early on. Spine crawler on the way up. And, of course, eight Zerglings being spawned immediately. Oh, SCVs all the way off the line. This is all in situation, okay. ladies and gentlemen. There you go. No question about that. That is a ton of SCVs coming across the map. His economy is pretty much in a bad state as a direct result of that. Pulling all the way off. It's going to be drones versus that spine crawler. It's not even going to get up by the looks of it. In comes the Zerglings from the back. SCVs beating on the spine crawler. Spine crawler might, in fact, get up, but he's rushing the drone count right there. And the... Ah, oh, no. That is just uh, unpleasant. Is... Zerglings brutalized right there by Lona. Spine crawler is looking to get up, but it's not even getting a couple of shots off before it gets dealt with at this point in time. Well, you have to remember that this is the last round. Lona really has to win this. He decides to pull his SCV back. And his economy is... I mean, oh my god, his economy is actually even because he has Muse. I almost forgot that he is Terran <laughs> by... No, that's not a point. The thing is, he tried to do like an all-in push, and if that took down um, the economy, uh, the expansion and the spine crawler of Glade, he would have been able to take down the expansion of Glade, and that would have put him in front. So I wouldn't actually penalize him for that. But that was no, certainly not. There's no that question about it. A little I mean, bit. It was risky. Yeah. yeah, that that was it, that was certainly impetuous. But the thing is, Lona is actually still ahead in terms of harvesters right now. Because bear in mind that he did kill quite a lot of drones. Moonglay was forced to use those drones to defend, which meant that he threw them away right there. Which meant that they weren't mining anything. And Lona now have a, a very very strong economic advantage, and he's going to take advantage of that by building as many marines. And once again. Look at that. That's a massive pull off the line of Lona. He's going to give it a second try. This time, however, Moonglade is more prepared for it. He does have 20 Zerglings on the field, and he's just popped a Queen out as well. And he does have a Spine Crawler. Admittedly, it is fairly badly injured. Well, here comes the push, but you can see he doesn't have Baming right now. So it's going to be really difficult for him to actually come up against this early Marine aggression. Here comes he, he tries to go for a Sarah with the drone and the Zerglings. 
Oh, that is a massacre, ladies and gentlemen. The spine crawler is actually staying up and reaping a terrible toll, though. So once again, Lona pushed back. I don't know why he didn't kill that spine crawler. Literally, a, a nanosecond more of aggression would have done it. And now we see a counterattack all the way from Moonglade. And actually, Moonglade. Uh, He's going in there, you know what, he might even break this line. SCVs are holding it right now, but good positioning, great defense there by Lona, limiting the angles of attack from Moonglade, but Moonglade is not giving it up. He is a dog with a bone right here. Well, you have to see, if I, you actually look at the income count, Lona is still ahead in income. <laughs> It is equalizing, though. It is equalizing because he lost a bunch of SCVs and that defense was so good. He's droning up right here, getting much more, almost equal now, 18 to 20. So right now, Moonglade has contained his opponent in his base and he's forced Lona to actually bunker up and seal that particular gateway because he knows that he can't let the Zerglings in there. If he does, then it's going to be a massacre. Well, now, now there's a scouting overlord from Greater. Oh, it doesn't go down. It, it fly. It, it oh, fly. Oh, nice. <laughs> like, 23 but... HP left on that. Doesn't lose it. And that, of course, would have been critical because that would have supply blocked him. And it is a critical time in the game. You do not want a supply block right now. You don't want to have to throw away 100 minerals when you're behind in terms of your economy. Finally, Moonglade pulls ahead now. 23 harvesters to 22. Well, you have to remember that almost everyone is behind Lona in economy count and he won because he had slightly better decision making skills and also, you know, he was really aggressive. The reason why Zerg hates this map is because the natural is so far away um, from the main base, which makes it really, really hard to defend. But, you know, he's going to have speed now and he's going to go for Bailey. He's going to go for his, let me see, second guess. What do you hope, what, what, what units do you actually hope <coughs> to see? Because so far we are looking at the same units for these four games. Well, yeah, exactly. But to bear in mind, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, is the phrase that I would use. And right now, I have to say that I would call Moonglade being in a commanding position simply as a direct result of that early all-in failing not once but twice by his opponent, Lona. And I think that, honestly, Moonglade's in a position he's comfortable with right now. He's going to have Speedlings up, he's going to have Banelings up, and we've seen how effective he can be with both. Whereas Lona is forced back into his base, which is not something Lona likes to do. He loves to apply the pressure, he loves to get aggressive. There's nothing worse than him just being stuck there, hiding behind a bunker. And finally, we actually see Lona going for the factory, so we could expect to see uh, maybe some Hellions or something a little bit heavier coming up in the not-too-distant future. Well, you have to remember, I mean, it's quite interesting to see how um, they decide to defend because Lona is like, okay, you know what? Zerg is not going to get into my base unless he gets Mutalis, which by then I'll be ready for him by building an engineering bay and having missile turrets. And you can see the Zerg player, I mean, Glade, actually going for the Go expansion. He's like, okay, I think I'm able to have map controls by having this amount of um, speed links around. I'm going to run them around. So I'm going to go for the Go expansion and try to get ahead in economy because for the past few games, I have taken so much risk in investing in my army but not really in my drone line. So you can have a look at the Harvester's count now. Yeah, Harvester's count, you'll see that Moonglade is way, way ahead and he is feeling pretty good about himself right now. Finally, his economy pulling ahead of Lona in a pretty damn major way. You can see that Lona expands into the back of his base. Very nice, safe place to do it as long as you can take out that selection of debris. And, you know, it is a... a it's not as risky as I would, you know, as I would claim on maybe another map. It's pretty damn good for Moonglade because he has that map control. He feels he can go for the gold and he grabs it. And you can immediately see the difference right there, pulling in a huge amount of minerals and trying to equalize with the mule count of his opponent because yeah hey we're gonna drop we've got two mules down at four loner and third one fourth one coming down so that is a lot of minerals coming in at very high speed the question is what is he investing it in he's got siege shanks on the way whereas moonglade mutalisk play and of course the speed upgrade for bane link well i kind of don't understand why he doesn't want to throw down 300 dollars to actually take the expansion uh, inside his base i guess it's like okay if he does a drop uh there it would be really hard for me to de defend um and the thing is he's He's kind of going for the most conventional build because he can't really scout right now. So he's going for Muta Bailing against uh, the Terran player, which is, you know, going for the first time that I have seen him uh, going for Mac view, which is he has Siege Tanks. What do you, what do you think about that? He's like yeah. building... That, that is, that's unusual. I've never seen Lona actually do this. But, uh, you know, to me, what that says is that Moonglade's 
amazing defense actually forced his opponent onto the back foot because mm -hmm. I don't think Lona really likes to play defensively like this. I haven't seen him play a lot, but from everything that I've seen in this series, Lona loves to get aggressive, mm -hmm. and he is going for the Marine Siege Tank push, which, again, is an aggressive strategy, but not at this stage of the game. He is bottled in his base right now with... Full map control being in favor of the Zerg player. Double engineering bait is down. Missile turrets are... There's only one up, really, in the mineral line. In comes the harassment from the side right here for Moonglade. Looks to try and get into the mineral line. He can't do that right now, though. A lot of Marines available. Massive number 41 in total for Lona. Well, as you can see, he is going for Borrow. We might be seeing Borrow Bailings. I mean, <laughs> that would be really interesting to see um, if he actually does that because then Lona will be step stepping on Minefuse. But you know what? I really like Lona's markering style. He is, he knows the really, he knows timing and he's like, okay, I need this right now because I need to support my army. Okay, you know what? Um, now I'm going to go for a mass tank. So I'm going to want to go for a third expansion, but I need to find a way to defend it. But you can see, you know, Glade is actually harassing with his Mutalis in the expansion right now. And here comes some, you know, here comes a couple of Marines to defend it. And there's going to be Missile Terrace back. Glade knows that, you know, he's not going to be able to take down this, take down this mineral line anytime soon. So he's going to use the Mutalis in Bathurst to try to catch the tanks out of positions and use his Speed Links and Bane Links to go, um, you know, to go harass the, harass the Marines that, you know, trying to catch him out of position. The most important thing about a Terran player, I guess, would be positioning. Yeah, there's no question, because bear in mind, this army composition is good, but without medevacs, it's very immobile. You're relying an awful lot on a screen of marines backed up by deployed siege tanks. So if you're going to respond to quick harassment, this is not an ideal setup. Let's be totally honest about that. You can stim the marines so you get a lot of mobility and you're really great against mutalists, but if you don't have medevac support, then what you're basically doing there, every time you press that stim button, you are doing horrendous damage to your own forces. We see a massive morphing of bane links from Moonglade coming up right here. He's got 32 Zerglings on the ground, 14 bane links, 20 mutalists. That is a, such a massive number. Unbelievable. This mutaling mix is going to come in and it could be extremely dangerous. Oh, yeah, there you go, harassing the front line of Lona, and he goes all the way around. Can he take the tanks out? That's the critical thing. Inflicting the damage right here, trying to draw him out of position, doing a good job. He's all the way in the base. He's going to have to force Lona to pull back, and if Lona pulls back, then we know exactly what's coming in at the front right there. That factory is on fire right now. Huge harassment, massive harassment. Factory goes down. Wow. This is, that is not good at all. Yeah, because if you, look at, if you have a look at the army count, they are pretty much even, but you have to remember that you know, Mutar Bailing versus Marine and Siege Tank, you have to be in good position. And if you look at Lona's map, he actually does not see anything on the map at all. If you look at his point of view, he's playing completely blind. Why do you think he's doing that? Well, I'm surprised he's not using Scan, honestly, but I have to say he's probably desperate to keep up with the harvest account of Moonglade, which is 73. Uh, this massive amount of harvesters. He is trying to keep up with that economy, so he's doing nothing but throwing down mule after mule after mule to try and make that happen. But if I am honest right now, Moonglade with that incredible map control, he even took a factory out as well, which is also limiting the number of Thors that could come out. Fall on it into the mineral line. Huge damage right here. Moonglade absolutely slaughtering them. And once again, abusing that lack of mobility. Those Marines are so heavily hurt right now by repeatedly stimming, and there are no medevacs on the field right now to deal with it. Well, as you can see, um, Lono is actually going for plus two upgrade. His plus two upgrades are almost up for his Marines, but you can see that, you know, this, with that amount of Mutalis, once a Zerg player reach an, a certain amount of Mutalis, it's going to be really hard for the Terran players to defend. Even with Missile Turrets, you can build like, what, three Missile Turrets, but you have to remember that Mutalis has splash damage. So, you know, look at the tanks. Oh my god. The tanks. <laughs> It's unbelievable. Yeah, look at those deployment, and they are so immobile. And right now, those mutilists have reign of the battlefield. They are destroying the economy of Lona. Lona is a full 28 harvesters behind. His economy is in tatters after now three successful harassment attempts from that flight of mutilists. Going in for the side once again. He cares not for your pitiful missile turrets. <laughs> look at that. Does it? A couple of shots is all it takes. So much damage, so much blood. Level 1 upgrade on the Glaive Rub. He's going backwards and forwards right now because he just has so much control. Thors are coming up, but once again, mobile army. He has a 200 foot army and looking at Lona's army, he only has a 150 foot army. He's like 50 army behind. How is he gonna... 
how is he going to be able to defend against Glade? I mean, if Glade, you know, decides to push, I don't know why Glade's not pushing. He's probably like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to damage him as much as I can. And if he looks like he's going to choke, I'm going to go for the kill, which he can right now, I would say. Because Luna... Yeah, he needs to do it right now. Luna is Look playing at how much blind. Money he's got. Look at that. He's playing totally yeah. blind. I, I mean, I think he has, he's he nervous. Has, he absolutely. He has no idea. He has no idea what is coming in. He doesn't even know about those two other bases. You now, there is a phrase, it's like, bitches don't know about my gold mineral expansion. <laughs> in this case, that is absolutely true. Once again, flight of mutalists. There's 32 freaking mutalists on the field, folks. That is a huge number. I've never seen so many mutalists. That mineral, like, he could actually kill the CC. He goes for it. He takes it. Unbelievable. The main base of Lona just got gutted right there. And there's no way that Lona can respond to it. Oh god, and he's going for the hive right now. Lona has to move out. He knows that he doesn't move out. He's gonna lose it anyway. He's gonna pull everything up. I hope he brings like all his SCV um to go and try to heal. Wait, here comes a scan though. Oh yeah, he sees it. Finally, he knows exactly what's coming. Big flight of Thor missiles straight into the middle of those mutilists. A couple go down. He is now finally starting to get aggressive because he has no other choice. His economy is in tatters right now. His army is not up to scratch. And in we go for the final encounter, folks. Massive surround right here. Banelings, Banelings, Banelings. Oh, it's good. It's very, very good. So, oh, unbelievable. Huge amount of damage right there to Lona. The food count plummeting right here and still in favor of Moonglade. Moonglade all the way back with all that money straight back. 132 Zerglings currently spawning right here. Needs to defend though. Needs to stop him from taking that down. In come the Mutalists once again. Huge numbers of them. Ah, it's melting. They're melting. There's nothing left. Lona has nothing left. Look at it. Good game, ladies and gentlemen. There you go! Unbelievable play there by Moonglade. Absolutely stunning. Well, we have our winner of I Am Asia. It's Moonglade. He he wins 3-2, right? Oh, wait, is it 3-2? Yeah, he wins 3-2. 3-1. 3-1. 3-1. Oh, my God. 3-1. 8-1. Was... Dominating play. I, think... I, I have never seen mutalisks used in that way. Seriously, so many of them. Killing a command center in the main base? I have never seen that done. I'm sure it's happened before, but it's so very, very rare. Unbelievable play by Moonglade. You, you have to remember that both of them don't really know how each other plays, so they are playing, you know, based on replays like they see of each other online because they, they are playing on different regions. And you can see that Loner, I think he's a, re he's a little bit surprised that this is the style that Glade is playing. Like, he's super, 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 super aggressive, which is different from the Zergs that he normally meet in China and Taiwan servers. Oh, we got our winner! This is from SEA! I'm sorry, guys, I'm not being biased, but you have to remember I'm from SEA, so I'm actually really, 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 really happy right now. What do you think about all these games? Unbelievable set of games, no question about that. And that last one absolutely took the cake. It just that kind of macro play, 132 Zerglings being spawned simultaneously. Have you ever seen so many? He literally replaced his food count in about three seconds flat after that massive engagement. <laughs> Banelings from freaking nowhere. So many Banelings. Never has there been a more appropriate use of the term. And of course, 32 mutalisks in the air, doing more damage than I've ever seen a mutalisk do. Bear in mind, people say mutalisks don't win games, but in this case, I have to say they really <laughs> did. Well, it's it's well, it's a really good game, but I would say Blade kind of played. I it's he played really, really, really well in the last game. You have to give him that. And Lona, he was just being a little bit. Lazy, I guess. He didn't really want to scout at all. As you can see, he was playing blind. But he did really well, you know. He has to, he had to play a lot of games to actually come to the finals here. But, you know, Glade is going to Germany to play to play in IEM. <laughs> I'm so... I'm like... Oh! <laughs> there you go, folks. And he, he damn well deserves it. There is no question about that. Incredibly hard fought. Really well played by both guys there. But Moonlight coming out on top with some absolutely dominating economic play. And I, I've got to give props to Moonglade for not one, but two amazing defenses against very powerful all-in approaches, very powerful pushes, their early game from Lona. And it, do, it takes a special caliber of player to be able to deal with that. Thank you for joining me, TV. You're super... Absolutely. My pleasure and honor 
to cast games of that caliber. Thank you very much for providing knowledge where mine absolutely fails. Thank you very much for that. You've done absolutely fantastic analysis there. So I hope everyone really got an awful lot out of that particular broadcast. I enjoyed the hell out of that, regardless of how early it is. I would like to go back to bed, but I can't. Too much adrenaline pumping through my veins right now. I think I'm going to go run 10 miles right now <laughs> because I have to just to tire myself out from that. Wonderful stuff, and what a great way to start the day. All right, so we're going we're gonna to get off the stream right now. And TV, everybody's a, everybody in the SEA is super happy to hear you, guys. You should come and join us sometime. Absolutely. I'm, I'm surprised we didn't have latency issues, but I'll be honest, you know, that works better than most of the other dual casts I've done. So we should definitely do that again sometime. Massive fan of that. And, of course, if you missed any of the games, I believe we're both vodding this. Be up on my YouTube channel. Shameless plug, youtube.com slash Total Halibut for games from this series, as well as stuff that I cast last night from the Game Preds Invitational, all sorts of different stuff. And again, thank you very much to uh, the guys over on the SEA for putting up with my terrible accent, because I'm sure you guys absolutely despise it. Okay, and you can follow Toto Biscate on Twitter at twitter.com slash Toto Biscate. Thank you for joining us today. Emily is going to Germany. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> That's great. I need to get one of those. Where do you get that? I'll, I'll, I'll get one shipped to you. No problem. <laughs> okay, so I'll talk to you another time. Thank you. See you next time, guys.